Hello and welcome to a travel tips. Today we're going to talk about airport assistance. This is the disability type of assistance. If they are disabled or they cannot walk very far or other other reasons, uh, including some reasons which have been cited, uh, people were using the service because they are too lazy to walk anywhere, or even as I've read uh, doing research for this particular video, uh, some Asian uh, countries coming into the UK they they book assistance because they cannot speak English. And they do not know where to go. So they book the assistance in order to get help to go through the terminal. Even though they are probably fully able to uh, walk and make their own way. This is because a long time ago, before uh, cuts in the budget, there was a service where you could book uh, help to go through the airport if you had, if you had limited English. Because that, that, that's no longer available. And you often, I know it's very wrong, but you often see people thinking, um, yeah, what's wrong with them? They can perfectly walk well. But then you have to remember that some of the disabilities that you might know about are actually hidden disabilities that you might not see on the outside, but they will limit a person's ability to be able to move around. So you should never judge a book by its cover. As far as I can see, it's wrong. Uh, but people do. I was looking at research on this and I was obviously saw a uh, article there, imposters using the wheelchair service. And I was thinking to myself, well, you know, this is all about people that use uh, the service when they don't really need it. And this was an article uh, which was written October 2017. Uh, so it's quite a long time ago now. Uh, and obviously, they cite that there are perks to using the service, apart from not having to walk very far. You know, you get your you get your ability to go through security. You get to board the plane first. You get to have help with your baggage. Um, you know, things like this. And I can tell you now that really. It, it, it's not a good thing if you you really need a, a uh, service like this and why are you going to fake it? I really don't know. However, the idea of this went on and this lady has experienced um, severe problems with the service being abused. Not only because of other people, but also because of people calling her a faker. Um, the idea is what we're talking about today is actually the uh, airport assistance that is regulated by the CAA. Uh, as I was doing the research for this video, I discovered that there's a whole thing there which might be of interest to you if you're disabled. There is a legal requirement from the CAA that you, the airport's and uh, airlines have to provide this within the EU. They actually specify that outside the EU it can be a bit sporadic. However, from my ex personal experience of it around the world, occasionally it's actually better around the world than it is in the EU or in the UK. Now, so let's have a look at the uh, CAA and just go through a few things there. So this is caa.co.uk. So obviously when you're looking at the, uh, we're talking about booking your ticket, arranging special assistance. Now, in an ideal world, you should really uh, select it and set it up 48 hours before you travel, uh, whether through your travel agent, tour operator or airline. Uh, but who, whoever does that, I don't know. Uh, I've never done it. Um, obviously, I have booked my seat, but that's about what I've done. 
So the idea is what can you ask for? Well, there's quite a lot of things there. So transfer from a particular point, such as a car park or a bus stop. Uh, obviously, we know how successful that is from my trip on the train when they were supposed to meet me at the uh, London Underground and nobody was there. The use of an airport wheelchair to get around, extra help going through security, assistance with boarding the aircraft and specific seats on the aircraft. Well, that's obviously come under booking uh, when you book it. Airlines would obviously need to know if you're taking an electric mobility aid, electric wheelchair or mobility scooter. Uh, and also they will know, need to know about your condition if you need extra care. Uh, so there's a few questions there that you might want to ask uh, the airline. Am I fit to fly? Now obviously this will depend on what is your your medical condition is so you'll obviously if you have a serious condition you'll be asked to provide information about your situation or condition uh, and if the airline has concerns about how flying might impact you it will ask you to complete a further form now i have to be honest with you i have this with my uh, previous wife we we declared everything to the airline and then they refused to take us and they made us, uh, they cancelled our ticket and they made us get another airline which cost us more money and they did not refund our money, the difference between the two airlines. So you have to be wary that if you do declare something um, that your airline has the right to refuse to take you. Uh, now obviously the the whole thing with this this uh, situation of uh, our situation was there was just the two of us. There was no extra people coming along to help out. Now airlines can actually insist that you have a carer, and it's uh, quite important if you cannot evacuate independently in the event of an emergency. They need to buy their own ticket as well. And obviously they need to make an effort to, for you to sit together, uh, which obviously is, is another subject. General medical advice. Okay, you have travel, travel insurance, vaccines, um, both of which are important. Uh, if you're going to a country that you need to have a vaccine for, it's probably advisable to sort that out before you go. At the airport, can medical equipment can medical equipment be affected by screening equipment? Well, there's a whole thing, whole thing there about various things to do with that subject. Medicines, uh, well, medicines is quite an important subject for majority of us. That would obviously depend on the country that you're going to. The section here is about medications. Can I take my medication on board? As I say, if it's all about the country that you're going to, checking out that you can actually bring it in to the country with your with yourself and not break any laws. Uh, for example, Thailand has very strict rules on types of medication that you can bring into the country can you carry other needles and syringes in your hand baggage again it's quite important that you speak to your airline uh, and there may be additional requirements so electrically powered medical equipment obviously that's is all about batteries Oxygen that they can they they generally will supply their own air cylinders for medical use because you're not allowed to carry your own uh, cylinders on board and they will usually supply it for a fee which obviously is an additional cost that you have to 
think about. Assist assistance dogs is an interesting one. Airlines must accept all assistance dogs for air travel without charge. And dogs will usually sit in the space on the floor in front of the seat. Uh, they will usually seat them in the front row if possible. Uh, if not possible, and it's a larger breed, then the airline may charge for a second seat uh, in order for there to be enough room. A safety harness should be taken on the plane uh, during takeoff and landing. An airline may ask for confirmation that your dog has been trained. <laughs> no, we're just having any old dog. Uh, and obviously the uh, pet will need to be complying with the rules and in international flights to other countries. And of course then you have to worry about the quarantine rules for other countries as well. Uh, and obviously they will need to comply with that. So we have, uh, hopefully, airlines are responsible for communicating an essential information about a flight in accessible formats. Uh, so obviously this is your in-seat uh, guidance for how to evacuate. And airlines may use, may use audio and visual materials as well. Now, interestingly, airlines are obligated to provide assistance to and from the toilet and most will have onboard wheelchairs to help. It's important to discuss your onboard needs with the airline before they before you travel and obviously then they can tell you how their staff can help you. You may, may need to ask the airline to be seated close to the toilet as possible. Assistance at the airport. When should you check in? They may recommend a slightly longer time frame for passengers with disabilities. I normally arrive two, two to three hours before, usually three or maybe more than three, uh, usually because of the delay. Uh, obviously go to the assistance point Assistance point will usually have some kind of disability related logo. Staff can help you with taking you to the designated assistance area, getting to check in and bag drop, going through security and obviously to the departure gate. Alternatively, a companion can escort you including putting you in an airport provided wheelchair. Uh, you have, if you have your own wheelchair, you should be able to use your own equipment right up to the departure gate. And boarding can help you travel through the departure gate onto the aircraft. They will also help you to get you to your seat uh, with stowing of your bags if required. At your destination airport on arrival, your uh, wheelchair or mobility aid should be returned to you at the arrival gate, unless there are extenuating circumstances, like that they've lost it or broken it, uh, which is quite common. You may be entitled to assistance through immigration, customs, baggage reclaim, and at, all the way out to the designated arrival point in the depending on the country that you're going to. So there are two types of batteries. There's the lithium battery and non-spillable battery. So these are the two types. The uh, type of uh, lithium can, comprising of many types of cathodes and electrolytes. Uh, they're separated into two types and it's all about the watt hour is a measure by which lithium batteries are regulated so you have to know what that is it's usually on the on the label 
and then they have the non-spillable also known as wet filled with acid or alkaline or gel type batteries obviously these are the two types allowed uh, onto aircraft medical and mobility aids containing batteries so here's a very good little uh, table so you can see the information there I mean in most cases they will put it in to the hold for you uh, so you can actually requiring air, airline approval as well so wheelchairs uh, will be put into the hold and they require uh, that's wet batteries they need to be approved by the airline so there's loads of uh, information in, in the one that would be interesting me is is this one here the powered by lithium um, it, the batteries can only be taken on it as the um, on into the cabin so you need to be removed from the machine um, and the motor is inoperative the battery needs to be secured and the battery terminals are protected from short circuit so you see this is uh, stowing it correctly for transportation well I hope that that's been useful uh, for you and that's been a very very quick run through and there is a lot of information on there that was quite interesting to read and uh, I do recommend that you go on and have a look at it uh, it's, you know if you're if you're bored and you've got nothing else to do then the CAA website is quite interesting <laughs> anyway have a good day I'll catch you again for another travel tip very soon okay bye for now